We're back at the local pick apart. And we're gonna take some parts for our Chevy Vega. We're gonna take the S10 Blazer pull spindles. It includes the brakes and the calipers, but this time I didn't come by myself. I brought help. You ready to get to work? All right, let's do this. Welcome to the Burnouts and Rotor Blades YouTube channel. Let's go do something awesome. Can you cut it? Oh, there you go, good job. Ah, there we go. And this is the part that I wanted right here. Do you wanna work on the other side? Yep. Woo! <clears throat> well, you're probably wondering, what is so great about all these S10 spindles in the first place? And the honest answer is, everything. They're way better. They have five lugs over the stock Vegas four lugs. They have a much bigger disc. They have two pot disc brakes that are not mounted the old school way from the 70s. They have a captured sealed bearing that's easily replaceable. They are just better. Let's throw some tunes on, get the car jacked up and leveled, tear that front end apart, and maybe we'll take some measurements along the way. And now that we got the spindle off, here's for a side-by-side -side comparison. 10 inch disc and a single pot caliper, right? There's our single pot caliper right there. That's our stock Vega. Well, we're gonna upgrade to this guy right here. Five lug, 11 inch disc, an inch bigger and two piston caliper. Let's say six and a quarter, five and three eighths. So about an inch difference. We'll say eight and a half. Yeah, I know, but we're doing differences. Seven. Three yeah, so about an inch. So this is our 72, this is our 2000. So if we go mating surface to mating surface, we got seven and a half on the money. If I get rid of all the dirt that's up here on top, we got seven and a half pretty much on the money, mating surface to mating surface. Yeah. These are the same from 72 to 2000 are the same. Center of hole to center of hole, we got six and three quarter, center of hole, to center of hole, we have six and a quarter. So it's a half inch. This one is a half inch shorter than this one, which means at some point we're gonna have to shorten this arm, but I wanna shorten this arm a whole inch so that we actually end up with a tighter turning radius because drifty, drifty. Well, now that we've got the old setup removed and we have the new one sitting over here next to it, we can see that there's some differences and the differences come mainly with the hole diameter for the upper and lower ball joints. The Vega upper and lower ball joints are significantly smaller than the 2000 S10 ball joints. There are a couple of ways that we can go around that. The majority of this video is around way number two, but we're gonna talk about way number one first. Way number one is the easiest way. For the guy who just wants the five lug upgrade and just wants the brakes, but doesn't care about changing any of his alignment characteristics or numbers, and maybe isn't super concerned with his handling, that's probably gonna be the better way. Now, a guy named Bob Gum has this website called v8monza.com, and he creates these little adapters that slot into these bigger diameter holes on the S10 spindle in order to make it fit on the stock Vega ball joints. So on to the easy way, or way number one, we're gonna use Bob Gum's V8 Monza ball joint adapters to throw this on so you can see how easy this can be. That's heavy. Yeah is that we'll slide down over the top like that. We're done, that's it. That's, that's all there is to that. Connect up the brake line, connect up your steering, and bleed your brakes and you're done. Bob is a real nice guy and he actually supplied these ball joint adapters for this video and for this demonstration. And he went ahead and said, look, when you get done with those, uh, I want you to take those and a hat and a shirt from v8monza.com and I'm going to throw those in and I'm going to let you give those away to somebody who you choose. 
So I'm gonna do that, but I'm gonna go one step further and I'm gonna throw in one of the Burnouts and Rotor Blades OG shirts in that mix as well. All I want you to do is hit the like, hit the subscribe, and leave a comment down below, but the best comment wins. Remember, it's arbitrary, so it's whatever I want after I've had a couple glasses of wine. So that was all way number one, and it's the easier way it is for somebody who just wants the five lug so that they have more wheel options. That's a really, really big one for the five lug. If you're doing it just for the braking benefits, go ahead and check out my other videos, the rear end install and the master cylinder install that I'll throw in one of those little things. You can click that link and go check out those videos because honestly, this is probably the last step in the whole process in order to upgrade your braking system. If you want more out of your Vega and if you have the fabrication skills that are required to do the things that I'm about to do. Way number two is going to be the best way to do that. You need to order a couple of things. The upper and lower ball joints for a 2000 two wheel drive. All four ball joints on the S10 cost less than a hundred bucks for a set of Mastercraft. Not only that, but should they go bad, I'll be able to easily source them, which is a real problem with the stock Vega ball joints. We have these ball joint sleeves from UB Machine, and I'll put the part number right there. Bring back the tunes, let's finish getting this front end apart. Tribal knowledge within the H-Body community says that you can gain a little bit more caster angle by swapping your upper control arms from one side to the other. We've already done our preliminary check on the caster angle Maybe not the most correct way, but as close as I can get it with weight on the A-arms, but not necessarily weight on the spindle. I did find that the caster numbers are within stock spec, so I think it's at least close to do it this way. Now when we compare that with what we got whenever we did our caster check with the upper control arm swapped side to side, we can see that we gained positive camber. This total positive camber gain brings us up to almost five. Now, most modern cars with power steering run three to five degrees positive camber. I looked at, you know, the most extreme of steering scenarios, drifting. Drifters will typically run between seven and I've heard up to 14 degrees of positive camber. They like to have self steer or whenever they are drifting one direction, they like to have the car switch back to the other direction kind of on its own. I would like to have my car do that as well. And in order to do that, you need to dial in quite a bit more than the stock standard amount of caster that's available on the Vega. For that reason, I'd like to shoot for somewhere between seven and nine degrees of positive caster with a little bit of adjustability left so that I can fine tune it if it's too much or too little. I do intend to go power steering with this Vega and you can see that in an upcoming video. I think that adjusting our upper control arm side to side, giving us that five degrees is the beginning. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mount our upper upper ball joints. We're gonna move them out just a hair and we're gonna bring them back just a hair. We're gonna move them out just a hair and we're gonna bring them back just a hair. We'll do that by aligning our new ball joints forward inboard most hole with the stock ball joints forward inboard most rivet hole and filling and re-drilling everything so that it lines up accordingly. Any ideas?
there's basically two ways to do this. You can have an ice cream truck drive by your house while you're trying to film, or you can't. Now the whole point of this job is to replace this with this. But unfortunately, that won't fit in that hole. So in order to do that, we have to install this ball joint sleeve. But we need to be able to drill a hole that it moves this one quarter of an inch in board to make up for the negative camber gain that you would get by putting the S10 vault or the S10 spindles on the Vega. In order to do that, there's a couple of different methods. One option is to take a freeze plug. This Dorman part number is what I use, an inch and a half in diameter, and go ahead and mark the center of it, and then another line a quarter of an inch above that line and shove it down into this hole, making sure that it's aligned. And we can take a hammering device and make it part of it. Then you can use a hole saw to drill that hole out, not at the center point, but a quarter inch up like that. And that should give us our actual hole. Now, since both of the hole saws that I have won't fit this purpose, I'm just gonna do it the hard way. But if you're tooling up for this job specifically, I'd recommend this is a much cleaner way to do it. Now as far as placement of this game goes, you can either cut the hole smaller than the size of the ball joint sleeve, 2 and a 16th or 2 and an 8th inch hole saw. Now what that's going to do for you is it's going to allow the, the ball joint sleeve to just butt up against the bottom of the control arm. Then you can run a weld to hold it in place. That provides an extra level of safety should the weld fail. It doesn't just allow the ball joint to slide all the way through and you end up with your lower control arm on the ground on the highway. And that seems like the smarter way to do it. Or you can do it the way that I've chosen to do it. Cut out with a plasma torch to almost the size of the actual ball joint sleeve and then go ahead and file it to fit all the way around the inside diameter of the lower ball joint hole. Once the ball joint sleeve slid up in there tightly, I tacked it into place, measuring the distance from the bottom of the control arm to the bottom of the ball joint sleeve as 0.3 inches, which is a perfect measurement of depth for a ball joint sleeve that has been trimmed down to 0.6 inches. That do? What does this do? Scheiße. After a lot of four letter words, using that press, this is what we're left with. So let's now go ahead and put the boot on and we can call that lower ball joint done. So, it's, pretty, so, 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 it's pretty dang heavy. 
jack it up. Stop. A little bit more. A little bit more. A little bit more. All right, stop, stop, stop. Holy daddy. Dang it, Vlad. Come on, big helper, you got this. Let's do this. All right, stop. This right here prevents this from going very far. Why is this and so? You will get more than like 15 degrees of steering angle. Daddy, so we're just gonna hack that off. You are so Looks like my camber adjuster bolts for the lower suspension are at their maximum setting, moving the lower control arm in, which would account for some, so, oh, some positive camber and a possible loss in caster. Initially, I tried to use brake lines from the 2001 Chevy Blazer because their banjo end fitting, which is a 10 mil fitting, already bolts up to the stock Blazer caliper. The problem is the hard lines that come from the Chevy Vega are a 3 8 inch brake line and the hard line that comes from the Chevy Blazer is a 7 16 inch brake line and in order to get that to work, you need to put a little adapter in the line. I don't necessarily care to have more adapters in my line. The option that I did ultimately go with is these brake lines, part number BH36847. They are for a 1983 Chevy Malibu wagon. The benefit is they have the 10 millimeter banjo fitting on one end and the 3 16 on the other. They're a perfect adapter line to go from the hard line on the 1972 Chevy Vega and the Chevy 2001 Extreme Blazer Brake Caliper, which is a 10 mil bolt banjo. Whew, that was hard to say. As far as length goes, they are in between those two measurements. So the Chevy Blazer line is a little bit longer than the Chevy Vega line. However, the block on the end of the Chevy Blazer's line means that you can only orient it in a way that's basically straight down, taking up a lot of that slack, and it doesn't give you the ability to turn all the way without it binding the line. That was something I was not okay with, having had a front brake line failure before in my Malibu at the drag strip. Even though I bought this car from California where there's virtually no rust, and I live in a place, Las Vegas, where there's no rust, this car's steel brake lines were still almost impossible to remove without damaging. So I ran down to the parts store and got replacement line fittings to put on these new lines. Now you will need to do a double flare on these lines, which is something I did in the car, and you can get the kit to do this from your local parts store, either for purchase or as a rental in most cases. I purchased mine because, well, I've used it a bunch of times and it's really saved me a bunch of time driving to the parts store to rent it every time.
Wait, we're not done yet. We definitely can't leave those old bushings in there. So come back next time whenever we replace those bushings and get ourselves an alignment. Don't forget to subscribe if you like the content and want to see more like it. And as always, thanks for watching. And if we flip over to the other side, you can see our one pot stock caliper for the Vega is uh, nowhere, near, nowhere near as powerful as our two pot S10. <laughs> <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.